morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are tuning in from. I'm Rachel with Rachel Morgan Coaching, and today I have Lauren Barlow with me. I'm really excited to have her here with me. She's actually one of the first people I met when I was getting started in my entrepreneur journey. So I'm excited to chat all about what that first year looks like. We both just passed our year. And um, a little bit about Lauren. So she is a business coach who works with female entrepreneurs to create a full body yes with strategies that they can get behind that embody their energy. So with a background in business management, I cannot imagine a better person to discuss processes and strategies around managing your business. And like I said, we both just passed our one year entrepreneur journey. So I'm so excited to share a few things that we've learned with you and how um, you can make your business more effective. So... Sometimes it takes a second. Oh, hello. It happens so fast. Hi, I know. <laughs> yes, well, good morning or good afternoon for you. Yes. My afternoon here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now tell us a little bit more about you, Lauren. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from the UK. If you can't tell by my accent, um, it's late afternoon here. Um, yeah, so I'm from North London. Um, I studied in London as well. So I'm a London girl, lived here all my life. Um, apart from the time I moved to Florida, but that's a different story. Um, but yeah, I started my business a year ago, as Rachel said. We both started around kind of the same point. I'm kind of connected around there. Um, and yeah, I really learned a lot of the um, corporate business side in my business degree. And I just really wanted to bring this into kind of the online space and kind of bring a bit of energy and passion into it as well, um, rather than necessarily the typical corporate side that I had necessarily been kind of in my business management degree. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of what me. Now refresh me if I'm wrong and, and tell all of us, I think you had just graduated too and COVID had hit, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so many people had been in shoes and had to figure out what to do. So it's truly amazing that you've decided to create a business. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was really an interesting time because obviously graduated in the middle of a pandemic. Um, everyone around me, especially for business management, their professors and everything were very much leaning us towards a, you know, get a corporate finance job, especially nine to five, stable in the city. Um, and that didn't sound that fun to me. Um, I loved business management, but I thought there was so much more to it. The areas I had loved in my degree and lent my degree towards were you know sustainability um corporate social responsibility um gender at work i loved kind of those issues and really talking about uh, things and kind of making a bigger impact in the world so i really loved the idea of starting from something for myself being able to bring in the aspects of business management that i've learned bring in some of those principles bring in the, you know, the strategies and the technical side but being able to also bring some passion to it and bring some energy to it and just really help people make more of an impact I feel like with business which is such an amazing vehicle for doing that right well I can definitely um acknowledge that I may see anything you share it's always very full of energy and excitement and passion so you're definitely doing you're accomplishing that mission that you have for yourself and other people so um such a hard time though I can't imagine what that felt like just to graduate and then have to figure out what to do but you're doing amazing jobs um I would love to know like you know, since you and I have both just passed our one year mark, what is what have you learned in your first year being an entrepreneur? What could you share with people? Oh my gosh. Okay. So many things. Um, so I think the first thing that I would say and kind of what I've been leaning into when I say about like building a full body yes business, something that feels really true to who you are and feels really aligned with, you know, your mission, your values, why you set up this in the first place. Um, I think I would say that you don't have to do everything that you feel like you have to do. So I think it's really easy for us mm -hmm. to come into the space sometimes and see sometimes these kind of rules almost of, you know, you have to be um, posting this many times a week. You have to be running your business like this. You have to be, if you're successful, you should be working less than 20 hours a week. There are so many kind of rules and almost expectations and things that we feel like we need to be falling into. But I think it's really interesting when, we can look at those, but we can also kind of take a step back outside of these and look at, okay, which ones actually work for me? How do I actually want to be running my business? How do I actually want to be doing things? And I think that's been a huge thing for me. And that was the real um, turning point where things started to really flow, I feel like, within business is mm -hmm. when I stopped feeling like I had to follow the rules per se and started yeah. kind of doing things that felt really good for me and just following the 
you know, strategies that I could get behind things that actually felt like they were aligned with how I wanted to be doing my business. And I think that is such a underrated piece of advice to not necessarily listen to all of the advice that you are given and to kind of take what really works for you and leave what doesn't and adapt things in the way that, you know, they can serve you basically. I 100% agree with that. I think especially when you're first getting started, obviously, like you're learning the space and you're learning what it actually means to be an entrepreneur in that first year. Everyone is trying to tell you what you need and what you need, right? Like a lot of people tell you post every day. In fact, a lot of people tell you to post times a day and that's fine and all when you have nothing else going on but it's not sustainable and it's kind of a burnout because you you develop this stress like I didn't post what am I gonna do or how do I keep coming up with ideas or you know I I think the quality of your work times can drop and and to me like when you're posting all day what if you had a really good post it almost gets like lost right in all of the shuffles so I definitely think that's really good advice and knowing that like you don't have to listen to everyone and you really have to write for you and take your unique background into it and do something that makes sense. Right. Um, I would say like the big thing I really learned is like, just because you're open doesn't mean people are ready to buy. Yeah. You know, like I'm here, I'm ready, I'm available, but you have to like, it takes time to nurture and build people up. And like, it, it's like the same as a retail store. I like to say like, once you open the doors at 10 a.m. doesn't mean people are lined up out the door just because you're open. Like they trickle in throughout the day, right? 100%, I think definitely that's been a huge thing for me as well. Like prioritizing connections over everything because you never know what those connections will lead to. And I think um, I always remember hearing from like, my parents have always been in corporate um, jobs. And I always remember hearing from them when I was younger, like networking is so important, but I wasn't really listening, you know, when I was younger, I was like, okay, sure. But like now I can really see it. And I think it's just so amazing to really build your connections and build those relationships with other business owners, other people in the space. Um, so that firstly, you're not feeling like you're alone. You feel like you actually have a team around you, you have a support system around you. And secondly, you never know where you know, your next collaboration is going to come from, your next client is going to come from, someone might refer you. There are so many different possibilities. So I think it's a piece of advice there, just like really focus yeah. on connecting people. Yeah, I think that's an excellent um, piece of advice for that first year of the entrepreneurship journey is to really just get to know people that are following you. And, you know, don't see your competition as competition, but see them as a collaboration because you never know where it can lead and how you can work together, who they might know, right? Go into it with an open mind. 100% open mind in this all the way. <laughs> but I would love to like pick your brain a little bit we talk so much about processes and strategies and having that strong foundation. And I think there's a lot to be learned first year on what you actually need. Um, so I would love to know, first of all, could you define for us, like, what is a process? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that some of these words can sound obviously like really scary yeah. and you're like, I don't really want to include that because it feels like it's going to make things more complicated. But the way I would really define a process and kind of explain that to someone is it's, just essentially your plan for how you're going to do something in your business and it shouldn't be there to make things more complicated it should be in the areas where you're wanting to make things simpler for yourself and make things feel less overwhelming feel more manageable because if you can map out a process for you know we do this for example like with onboarding clients like how you would onboard a client you know what step one is you know what step two is if you can have a process for how you create your content for example it makes it so much easier to do this when this is a repeated task that you're going to be doing several times over and um, it can just make it so much easier to actually put these into action it makes them not feel overwhelming not feel scary you don't feel like you know you want to procrastinate them it doesn't take as much of your energy of your energy as you're doing these things it can just make them so much easier and it can make your business feel like it's running so much smoother as well so i think they can be so so valuable especially in the areas where you're feeling like things are feeling really complicated they aren't quite flowing in the way you're wanting them to I love that. That's such a good reason on why you might want to process, right? Like things feel a little difficult and you want to simplify it. It's not meant to like add to your plate, but meant to make it easier, right? And it's really like, from what I'm hearing you say, is it's like an outline, right? It's I, I need a step-by-step -step guide to help me get to where I want that's simpler, right? Like a standard almost. Yeah, definitely. And I think you can use them in any different way. And I think the same as kind of, I'm saying about the piece of advice from my first yeah. year in business, take what works for you from this, kind of define it in the way that works for you and put this into place in the way that works for you, I would always say. But I think it can be so nice to kind of look at like, okay, 
when I'm creating content, like what is my actual process? Like what is the process that I go through? Also, what's the process that works for me? Not necessarily just what we've seen other people doing, but like, are you someone who starts with, you know, the really creative stuff and then we move to the um, typing out captions? Do you want to do the graphics first? Like even just asking yourself questions like that and playing with the process and what this could look like, it can be amazing for cutting down the time which you're spending on some of these tasks, making them feel so much easier and making the flow of energy as well just so much better across this whole business. Oh, okay. Well, I have to know then, like, and, and I want to circle back to this content idea, because I feel like that's something that we all struggle with, with setting up a, a good strategy and process to get content down. Um, but what, why do you, or well, what are your favorite processes? Like, what is something that you do? What do you recommend people? Mm, okay, so probably my absolute favorite one, and if I was going to say to someone, just do one kind of thing and create a process for this is actually planning out your weeks and being strategic with what you are doing because I think especially in the first year it's really difficult to know what you should be doing especially in those first few months you're sometimes sitting there like okay should I be posting more should I be yeah. talking more? or should I be engaging more like how am I actually gonna you know build this business and get clients especially when you're new to the space um so I think it can be amazing to actually set that side, time aside each week and have a process where you'll be mapping out what you're going to be doing for the next really looking at okay like what is actually important for me to be focusing on right now? What are these needle movers going to be for me for the next week? And how can I focus my energy really intentionally on making sure I'm spending the most time on these tasks and not getting, you know, caught feeling like I need to be posting twice a day every single weekday because that's what one person said would get me clients. Whereas I haven't actually connected with anyone in two months, you know, maybe we might need to be shifting the focus there. But I think that's great to kind of have a process for really planning out your weeks. And that's something which is like, has become a non-negotiable for me now. Every Sunday, just really looking at what are my current projects on my business, in my business, as in like, what am I currently working on? How can I move the needle in each of these areas this week? Which are the most important ones for me to prioritize? Because obviously some weeks, some mm -hmm. things are kind of, um, taking up more of your time than others and needing more of your energy than others. So yes. I think just really planning out your week and figuring out a process that really works for you there would be an absolute fundamental I would say because I think so many things flow once you've got this really nice plan for your week and you know where you need to be spending your energy and where you need to be spending your time yeah oh you are speaking my language right now like one thing I always like to do is every Sunday I sit down with my husband and we're like okay what does our week look like what are our meals going to look like what do we have that's coming up where maybe I need a little bit more support so that me and both on the same page and then I sit down with my planner and my calendar and I'm like okay I've got this coffee chat coming up I've got this live do they have what they need do I have the links am I ready to go right and client work like did I get everything done that I needed to for that and how can I schedule that in fact one thing I really like to do right like setting priorities thing is sitting down in the morning and being like, okay, well, what are my top three goals for the day? Like actually scheduling my day and literally scheduling like what I'm going to eat so that I can see realistically, can I get this done? And if I can't, why, where can I shift it somewhere else? Right? Yeah. I think that's a real example right there of where a process might feel like it's kind of adding more to your plate because you getting to then spend 10 minutes at the start of each day sitting down to actually intentionally look at this, but actually, right. If you look at it as if you were doing this, it's saving you so making you feel so much less overwhelmed. It's making everything so organized, so easy to manage, but suddenly get to a point in the week and you realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to do this and I need to make sure I do this and feeling like you're constantly playing catch up because you're yeah. so organized things that although that's taking you a little bit of time, it's actually saving you way more time than it's actually taking you. It does take a little kind of before, right? But like you're saying, yeah, the long term is you end up saving so much more time. And I don't know about you, but I feel like when I actually like schedule something, it's more likely to get done too, because I'm like, okay, this is my time to do this. If I don't do this, it's not going to get done. Whereas if I don't schedule something, it, it might get done whenever, right? Absolutely. Yeah. If it's, in it's happening. So what are some other processes you feel we should look at in our business that could really help us? Yeah, so I think going back to content creation, I think because I think that's one thing that especially in the first year of business, people can get really hung up on content and feel like, um, you know, they need to be spending half their week just on creating content. Um, so I think looking at a process for that and how you can actually make this simpler and easier for yourself can be so um, valuable. And even just looking at where your time is really being taken there. And for example, if you know that creating the 
graphics is taking a ton of your time each time. Is there a way you can simplify that template for yourself and reuse this creative process that just makes this whole thing easy for you? I think absolutely amazing. As well, when it comes to getting client work as well, obviously during your first year when you're getting your first clients and you're getting to that point where you've got several clients and it can kind of hit that point of like, okay, how do I actually manage? You've never kind of, you know, managed multiple clients before. I think having a process for how you'll actually manage this workload when you're checking with your clients and um, when you will like, check in on Sunday, like, okay, what do I need? Like, has everyone got everything they need for this week? Everything like that. I think that can be amazing, especially during the first year. I think I would say those two are probably um, some really fundamental ones, which I think is so so important to really learn, but I would definitely say just for any area of business like it's getting a bit complicated feeling like it's kind of shifting outside of your control I think it's really important to figure out what a process could be there to kind of bring this a little bit back and make it a bit more manageable yeah you know and I, I think what you're saying too when it, you're creating content you had said this before like maybe one day you pull your graphics and maybe or maybe the first step is I'm going to do my graphics. And the next step is write your body. And then maybe the third step is write your caption or like your headline. And then maybe that fourth step is go back in and do the hashtags. But maybe you even the week, you start your week and you're like on Monday, I want to talk about this and Tuesday, this and Wednesday, that. And then you go back in and you do your graphic for each one. And then on Wednesday, maybe you do the next step, like just breaking it down into little pieces so that you can get the whole thing done. Right. Or creating yeah, templates just, like what you yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Slight delay, I think. Um, but yeah, it makes it just feel so much more manageable. And as well, it really helps stopping you from procrastinating, I think, because when you just, for example, write on your to-do list, like, okay, create content, and you probably will get to that, and you're like, okay, what does this actually mean? Like, what do I actually need to do for this? Um, and you kind of don't know where to start, because there's so many different places you can start, whereas if you've actually really clearly broken down what this list looks like for you when it gets added to the list there's almost no excuse to not do it because it's really simple it's really easy in terms of how you go about doing this great well and I think it's really overwhelming if you're like oh my gosh I'm gonna sit down and write out two weeks of content right I, I don't know about you but I am like I, the creativity doesn't always flow when it needs to right so I think if you step back and you're like okay well what does this process look like how can I break this down how can I make it easier right and maybe come back to when inspiration strikes or have a designated day you know even like we said with client work too like maybe it's every Monday you do your client work, and then every Tuesday you follow up right um but it's being really intentional with I'm gonna do this on this day at this time and scheduling it and then scheduling around those important priorities right to me that's yeah. like a way to kind of simplify yeah 100 i feel like what you were saying there about getting the ideas for the content that's one thing where um i almost break my own advice a little kind of processes because i know that with my creativity for ideas i can't just say to myself because i've tried this before and it doesn't work for me um, and that's where it's so important obviously to follow what really works for you because if I try and sit myself down like for two hours and say, right, I'm going to get all of my content ideas out, like the creativity just doesn't come when I want it to clearly. Um, all the so I think with something like that, where you know that it will work better to not necessarily restrict it to a certain time. And instead I my process for that and how I actually get ideas, I've got to put all of my content ideas and as they're coming throughout the month, as they're coming throughout the weeks and doing it throughout the days and after a client call, I might be inspired. That gets, and then my process for that is when I'm sitting to down to create content, I've got a list of like 40 ideas from the month of things which I thought, oh, this would make an interesting post, or this could be a good thing to talk about. And then from there, I can then with those ideas. So I've still got for how I kind of do this. It's just not a process, right? I'm going to sit down in this one sitting and do all this. I've just created a process which works for me around that. Right. I do the same thing. Uh, when idea strikes, I write it down. I have like a little section on my phone where I can put an idea and on Google Docs and um, just to kind of like write it down because you're going to forget like ideas can be so fleeting sometimes, especially if you get busy. And so, you know, like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was so good. I want to write that down now. And then I can go back in and like hash out that idea. Right. And create content around it. But um, I think a really good process is having like a place to put that when it comes right or even if it's just like oh I really want to try this in my business right taking time to write those notes down it's not even just about content right 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, great, as we said, like you can create process for any area. And I think, I think it's just when you find areas which are feeling a bit overwhelming, like that's where you know that you need to start figuring out, you know, a process which will actually work for you and figure out how you can work best within this and how you can make it super manage yourself. One thing you had said a few times, and I'd like to circle back to, is that you try to prioritize your needle movers. So I'm really interested, A, what are needle movers? And B, how do you determine what one is? Yeah, so what I would say for that is, you know what your intention is probably each month. So you know that, okay, going into this, this month, my intention is I want some more. Going into this month, I want to have more collaboration. You know what your intention is. And I say intention instead of goals, because I think, the goals sometimes we almost lose what the intention is through the goals so i think it's really important to get actual intention underneath your goals are um and then kind of when we're clear on what this intention is we can figure out what those needle movers are going to be for that in terms of what is actually going to get us to that intention what is going to help us move towards this mm -hmm. um and so when you're looking at your month and you know that okay my um, intention is to be signing more clients then a needle mover would obviously be having the sales calls with the clients and you know building those connections and nurturing warm leads you can figure out those essentially um actions going to help you move towards the intention are and i think they're the ones you want to be prioritizing and it can be super easy kind of feel like okay i want to sign more clients so i'm gonna um do the thing that feels really easy which might be um you know, creating content for you and okay, I'm just going to be doing a daily post and we'll just put that out there, but I'm not actually going to be connecting with anyone. I'm not going to be any, building any relationships or having any conversations with anyone. I just want to sit silently back um, and just create my content because that feels good to me. But when you can actually look at, okay, my intention is I want to be building relationships. I want to be signing clients. What is actually going to get you there and how can you actually put that into your weeks and maybe minimize some of the stuff which yeah. isn't actually so what I'm hearing is a needle mover is something that pushes you closer to your intention. So an action that you can do that helps you get closer. And so stepping back and really, well, what is my intention? Is it to find more clients? Is it to collaborate more? And what do I need to get there? And actually, I think that's a really good way to go about a process is like kind of working backwards, right? It's like, here's my goal. And now what do I need to get there and how can I make it easier to get there instead of just this messy action like well I need more clients and I don't know what to do and maybe I'll post times a day and maybe I'll send out an email and maybe I'll do that but like being really intentional we'll go back to that word right in the steps you take to get there and almost working backwards right yeah absolutely I think that's an amazing way to describe it and I okay. think if with that intention and you know that okay this is what I want to be moving towards, then you can't go too far wrong. I think a lot of people will almost get a bit lost on what their intention actually is. We can kind of sometimes, especially in your first year, of course, like you're going through the motions a lot and you're not really sure like, okay, what do I even need to be doing? Do I want to be focusing on? Do I want to be setting my program a bit more? Do I want to be signing clients at the moment? Do I want to be growing a following? And you're feeling like you want to do a bit of everything. So I think if you can actually just get really super clear on like, what is my intent? Not necessarily forever, but for this week or for this month what do I want to be focusing on and then what do I need to be doing to get me in the direction of that intention right and I think that's just really good advice in general like say you want to launch something you're like I want to do a course everyone's doing a course I should do a course right oh, I could maybe do a course on this but it's like stepping back and asking yourself well, what is the intention of me doing a course like what do I hope to accomplish by actually doing that right and then working back well does my course actually accomplish that and is there a better way to do that and I think that's true of even content that you're putting out like what is your intention of putting this post out is it you know and is it going towards my big intention my well we'll say goal here but I know what you're trying to say right and hopefully you are as everyone else is as well but um I think that's just a really good way to set up processes in your business and make sure that you're very aligned in everything that you're doing yeah 100% I think it's so important to make sure that as you said, like if you are deciding to create a course, is this the right decision for you? Or are we just creating a course? Because, you know, you've seen everyone else create a course. And I was having a with a client, for example, a few weeks ago where they were saying, okay, I feel like I should launch a course. And I was like, why? And they were like, okay, because I've, you know, I've done the one-to-one, -one, then I've done the group program, so I should in the course next. And maybe the course actually might not be the mm -hmm. thing you want to do. You might find that, you know what, I, 
I really love community and that's a huge value of mine and connecting with people like it is for me. So maybe a group program might be the better fit for me. Maybe I might want to do it, you know, live rather than kind of passive course. I think it's really important to consider what your actual intention and the reason behind you wanting to do this and how can you also achieve this in a better way. And I think that really comes back to as well where I say about like full body yes business and really embody your energy within your business because it's so important to really look at, okay, I don't need to necessarily fit the mold of, I have to do things a certain way. It has to either be, you know, a course, a group program, a one-to-one as the online space tends to be. I can, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's your business. You can create things however you want. So I think it's really interesting as well, like looking at how you can bring your own energy into the different things you're doing in your business and what might be your next decision, what might be your next move. How can you do this so that really works for you? Right. I I think you kind of full circled that really well. And like your point where you don't have to say yes to everything and, and you don't have to take the advice of everyone, because I think that goes back to our intention and why we're doing the things that we're doing and what we hope to accomplish by doing that. So I guess my advice, and I think you feel the same way is if you're not sure if you should do something, ask yourself, well, what would be my intention of doing this? And what is my overall intention? of my business and like what is what is my mission right and does this fit in to that and why not and really ask yourself that and it's okay if it doesn't right everyone will tell you have a blog do all the social media channels right like do clubhouse do tiktok do linkedin right but is that actually what you need is that actually going to put you towards what you need right um so i think that's a really good way to kind of frame that in terms of like a process absolutely and as well with um you saying about moving towards what you need moving towards what you want as well because because you might for example having um you know doing a course would be what i want that sounds brilliant but then you might actually get to the end of or not the end of this journey but you might get somewhat along this journey and realize actually you know what i feel like i'm really missing this community i love talking one-to-one with so why didn't i do this why didn't i go with this route and i think it's so important to that what you're really wanting from your business as well and how you're wanting your business to feel and how you can make sure that you're you know setting yourself up for success with this and taking the actions which are going to help you to create more of what you are wanting to create with your business and to um feel the way that you're really wanting to feel in your business and get out of your business what you're wanting to get out of it right um so just to kind of summarize what i've been hearing for those that just tuned in to um your biggest advice is don't do anything that doesn't feel right, right? Like you get to run your business the way that you want to. And one of the best ways to go about it is to start with what is my intention and then working backwards, right? And being like, how can I simple, what is my goal here? Does this fit in? And then once you've decided what your goal is, is to break it down now. Well, how can I make it easier? How can I schedule time to do this in my day to day? What does that actually look like? And how can I put things in place to help me get that done every day? For instance, like you said, maybe you create something on your phone or a notebook where an idea strikes, you can write it down so that when you get to that day or get to that process, it's much quicker and easier for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. (laughs) You said it perfectly. But yeah, I think it's just a journey of how how can you make things simpler for yourself is um, like you heard the 80 20 rule before, like I fully agree with that. And I think you can probably practice as well with your business where, you know, 20% of the actions you have done in your business have got you most of 80% of the results, which you have, got with your business so I think it's really interesting to look at okay what are my 20% of actions that are getting me the 80% of results and imagine if I could double the time which I'm spending on that 20 theoretically then I would be doubling the results which I'm getting and I can cut down the time I'm spending on these things which aren't actually getting me any results really or really moving the needle for me in any kind of way in my business and I think that's where it really comes down to simplifying things and you don't need to necessarily work a massive amount harder to get better results you can just simplify how you are doing things do things in a better way strategic way to get so much better results in your business oh lauren you're speaking my sales love language here pareto principle is one of my absolute favorites um it says 20 percent of your time produces 80 percent of your results and so i know that there's a lot of 80 20 out there but 
Um, it's one thing I always learned when I was in sales even is that literally 20% of your customers account for 80% of your sales. And do you know who those 20% are? And it goes the same when it comes to processes is that 20% of the things you do every day account for 80% of what gets done, right? And so I think that's where the automation and delegation come in. Like, how can, am I spending too much time on things I shouldn't be? And how can I delegate that to someone else? And so I think that again comes back to attention and priority and what your outcome what you really want it to look like and where you can have someone else come in to help you right yeah. kind of what you're saying I think it's just it's about how can we really make things simpler for yourself make things easier for yourself we're not saying the whole thing isn't going to be hard work so if it's simpler we can you know processes in place we can figure out what is actually getting us the results and actually take the time to sit down and figure out what this actually is for you to move the needle and get those results so much quicker in your business especially in your first year when you're kind of unsure with what you need to be doing anyway um and get those results so much quicker and get so much better as well and like you said um with the sales aspects i know you've got a huge background in sales um it's about figuring out do you actually know who those 20% of customers are get you 80% mm -hmm. of the results in the same way you know what the 20% of actions or the 20% of why you're spending your time while you're working in your business are getting you the 80% I think that's what most people are missing actual awareness of what that 20% is and I think if you can actually sit down and look at this and figure out okay what has actually got results so if you look back for example at your last 10 clients that you got where did they actually come from if you look back at the yes. um resonated with people what was it that you actually talked about what was it that you did differently so if we can actually figure out and get awareness of what this 20 percent is absolute game changer i love that you said that and i think that's really where like loyalty and repeat business come in is knowing who that 20 percent is if you don't know who's generating your income then how do you know how to nurture and love them and and have that repeat business right and just like in your process like you said is is if you've gotten this new client do you know where they came from are you asking what have you done to attract them at that point and you actually answered my question it's going to say well how do you know if something is a needle mover um because i think like we understand we need that but we don't always understand like what is that? Like, of course, we want to keep resuming that. So maybe you have a little more you'd like to add to that. But I think what you also said to um, is going back and finding out, well, where am I actually getting these people from? And what did I do to make that happen is really important. But maybe you have something more you'd like to add. Yeah, I would say around that, just get curious when almost analyze it. So take a step back from the day to day running of your business, get really curious and just almost investigate and see okay can i spot any trends here um can i maybe reach out to my current clients and hey i'm just really curious how did you come across me did they come across you, you know through instagram through facebook did someone recommend you maybe and you can really help then and join the dots kind of backwards and figure out okay what has been working for me in terms of where i have got the results and how can i then do more of these things to get me even better results in the next quarter year Right. I, I love that you said that. I keep saying, yes, yes, yes. But I totally agree. I think there's no shame in asking someone, how did you find me and what attracted you to me? And um, and learning. It's okay to be curious. It's okay to ask those questions. And your clients are going to tell you. Why wouldn't they, right? Like they've said yes to you already. They love what you do. You've probably built a connection with them. So it's okay to ask, right? And reflect on that a little bit and take note. And maybe you try a couple of things in your business and just be observant. Do you notice that you're having more conversations with people? Do you notice that your traffic went up? Why did your traffic go up? Is it because of something happening in the world or did you tweak something recently? Like, I think it's okay to take a moment and maybe schedule the time, right? Talking about processes and setting time aside, right? To do those things. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think while you're saying clients as well, I've never come across a client who would not be happy to tell you that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's as well, um, asking them the question of why specifically they chose to work with you. I've started doing that for the last six months and it's been so interesting because the answer is the exact same across every single client that <laughs> I've signed. It's been to do with my personality or my energy. It, it's been something around there rather than, you know, I saw this um, post that you did and it was super valuable and I love these top five tips that you should shared it was no I really resonated with your energy our personality um I felt like we really connected it was something to do with that so I think that's an interesting question to ask as well because ah. you can see you know, what is working for you why have people actually decided to work with you over you know the hundreds of other people they could have decided to work with 
maybe even thousands yeah. of people they could work with. Why have they chosen to work with you? And then you can figure out, you know, when we're talking about embodying your energy within your business as well, yeah. wow, what do we need to be embodying? Of? What do people really connect with? What are people building relationships and connections with? And I think that's such an interesting question to ask as well. What an interesting thing to think about and insight because we spend a lot of time on our content. But as yeah. you're saying now, it hasn't necessarily been what's been a needle mover for you necessarily. And, you know, one thing I always like to say is that literally anyone can copy you. They can copy word for word your post. They can copy your graphic. They can copy your name, like everything. But the one thing they can never recreate is the relationship you have with someone and that connection. And I think what you just said really proves that is that people said yes, a full body yes to you because of that relationship you had and that just proves how you can differentiate yourself in the space yeah I at least that <laughs> the value post or the, your top five tips or when you did a mini training we're not saying that's not helpful because I think that is so so helpful right. and that is still a for you but the final you know 10% of their thinking where they were maybe looking at five different coaches and they were saying okay I know that they can all do the job they know that they're all qualified they know they're all really good with their strategy but why would they go with you the final piece like you said is the piece that no one else has the personality it's the energy behind that so I think it's so important to really be aware when you're creating your content as well and have not actually bring my energy bring my personality and even if that's just with them emojis or a tone of your yeah. voice and language anything like that I think it's really interesting to kind of look at that being the thing which maybe sets you apart rather than the fact that you know your top five tips from someone else's Absolutely. And that just goes into being authentic and being yourself and making sure that you're writing from your point of view and not trying to copy and paste someone else. Because I always like when you copy and paste too, what if a question comes up and you don't even know the answer to it, but you copied someone else's work, right? So like, then that just ruins your credibility if you're like, I don't know, right? So it's always better to write from your perspective in your way and use those emojis if it makes sense. And, and you know, absolutely like what you said, your content is very important. People want to know what you know. And I think then adding your personality and your spin to it and the way you comp, like the way you interact with people really matter. And you know, when I was first starting, I had reached out to 11 business coaches and two responded. And guess what? I hired one of the two. And the second one only responded months later. That matters when we're having, right? And I'm like, how did this, like, they're all online and they weren't even yeah. responding. Literally, they're not responding. We're leaving money on the table. It's absolutely amazing. And, um, what was I going to say? Oh my gosh. Um, the way that we conversate over DM really does matter because you, you the way you make people feel is it shapes their perception of you. Right. And so if you're kind and you're nice and you're building connection, people associate that with you. But if you're cold and one word answer, just like all their posts and don't even bother to respond. Like, I feel like you really don't have my best interest in mind and I'm less likely to take you seriously when the time comes when I need that service. And so it, and, and people speak, a lot of people know each other in this space. And so you, like you and I are chatting right now, right? But you may chat with someone else that I know later and they may be like, Oh, that Rachel's so mean. Like, <laughs> and you might now feel different about me, but if I'm like, friendly to everyone and have the same standard and be myself, then someone else might be like, Oh, Rachel's actually really friendly. That's really cool that you met her. And, you know, like it, it goes around, right? And so um, I guess my point here with all of this is like, it, even setting aside a time process to just conversate with people and to build connection, like what we were saying is client reach out can be really impactful for moving the needle in your business. Yeah. Lauren, I can't hear you. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Everything you just said it could say months. So I thought take note of that firstly. Um I absolutely love <laughs> I absolutely love that. I think kind of um people have of you and the impact that you're leaving it's you said, you know, they'll forget the um number one thing that you can do this they might forget that they'll forget who said that way in which you've had a conversation with them how you actually reached out in dms to stories last week when you actually went above and beyond and really genuinely really authentically and like you would in another with another 
human in real life, you know, just on the internet doesn't mean it has to be any different. But I think just going above and beyond in that way leaves such a mark on people and they really remember that. And those are the memorable moments mm -hmm. where, okay, who should I hire as a sales coach? You come to mind, you know, because they're thinking of that and because they remember having this lovely conversation with you and they know that you care as a human and you're not just, you know, you're not just here to get a sale. You're here to make connections. You're here to um, really lives and even impact. So I think that alone as a sales tip is absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and same for you too, as a business coach, right? It's, it, it really does matter the way we show up and talk and DMs. But anyways, I know this took like a 180 in our conversation. I would say like the moral of this is really just, you know, examine what your intentions are. are towards those intentions and if not how can you change it and if you are what are your processes like how can you simplify it and make it easier for yourself and if it is complicated how can you delegate that and find someone else and how can you put that on your schedule and really set the time for you to get it done right yes, and if you need further, that's where you come in <laughs> yes absolutely I can completely agree with that. and yes that was definitely a bit of a 180 but I think that is so relevant to all of that as well because um even though we're making these processes I think we still need to you know um approach things in business the way we want to approach things so have those conversations don't feel like we need to stick within this kind of rigid oh, I can't message someone because that's not in my schedule until tomorrow I think it's so important as well to really um intuitively as well and kind of um yeah just really focus on like if connection is your real value and your real intention then focus on that within your business and that will move it for you and that will lead to the clients which you're looking for absolutely oh so well said i love it um well lauren you know it's interested is there anything else first of all i guess that you would like to add that we might have missed I think serious ground i absolutely love this conversation so much Oh, I do too, because it, it's an important one, right? It's one that we often overlook or don't take the time to have, but it is very important to set that self foundation within your business and to really reflect, right? Um, but Lauren, you know, if someone's interested in learning more about processes, they're not sure where to start or, you know, all the things in between, how can I work with you? Yes, absolutely. So I have a one-to-one -one coaching program. It's a four-month program. I'm really designed on helping you build a full body yes and really helping you to align your strategies so that you can actually um really get behind them bring your own energy into your business and your offers and how you are doing things so we can run things in a simpler and easier way um so yeah that's my one-to-one -one coaching program in a nutshell essentially um but yeah absolutely reach out to me on instagram with any questions about processes a little bit um confusing kind of as you're starting to journey into that but yeah my dms are always open for connection of course Yes, I will say the one thing about you, Lauren, um, that I can genuinely say is it's time to get to know each other and you really are such a genuine person and you have so much passion for the work that you do. And you're always like, whenever I send you a DM, you're always quick to reply and you're always so friendly. And um, I know that you truly love the work that you do and you really do genuinely care about your clients. I've seen the work and for your clients. So, um, you know, I definitely um, see you as an expert and know that you know what you're talking about. And um, so definitely reach out to Lauren if you have any questions at all. I'm going to make sure to have you linked below so anyone can click on your name and go check you out. And uh, again, thank you so much for listening today. Thank you, Lauren, for being here with me. I really appreciate you. So much for inviting me on. This has been an absolutely amazing conversation. And thank you so much for those lovely words. They have absolutely made my day. And yeah, love Aww. speaking with you. As of course, my pleasure. All right. Well, thank you so much. Amazing. Speak soon. Yes. Bye. Bye.